G'day guys, Matt here from Not In The Manual. Today's video is going to be on a battery health check done through the service mode built into the car. So I haven't run this before, I'm going into this totally blind, I don't know what information it's going to give me. I've been wanting to do this for a while but my car took a long time to get this latest update. I had to wait a couple of months before I got access to service mode so I've been familiarizing myself with, with service mode and I'm going to make a video purely on service mode and showing you bits and pieces through there and explaining a bit. It's, it's pretty cool. You can get a lot of, you can visualize a lot of what's happening with the car, with the cooling system, the HVAC, uh, all, those, all those things there. So yeah, it's really cool. I've had a lot of fun looking at that. It's not something you need to, to, to use all the time, but this battery health test we're just going to run it and see what happens and see how it compares to where I think the degradation of the battery is at. So if you look at the video I've just done recently on battery health, it was a bit of an update to one that I did over a year ago. And I suggest you watch that first before you watch this video. Probably doesn't matter, but it might, might give you a good lead into this and see where I'm coming from. So... Yeah, let's run the battery health check. So I'm plugged into, I will be plugged into an 11 kilowatt charger. So that's the, the, the rules for running the battery health test is your state of charge needs to be below 50% and you need to be plugged into a seven kilowatt hour, sorry, seven kilowatt charger or more. So I'm gonna be plugged into an 11 kilowatt charger, which is the maximum AC charge for this car. So that'll work out well. I've got an opportunity to do this. I've got another car to drive home tonight. I'm going to leave it overnight here at work to, to run this battery health test. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see what results we get. So let's get into the screen side of it and have a look how to get into service mode and run the battery health test. Okay, now we're going to go into service mode. If you're not sure how that's done, it's a matter of going to settings, software, and then you hold down the Model 3 logo and you get a bit of a... Um, pulse going on there and then you press type in service enable gives you a bit of a warning now remember I'm going to do a separate video on this so what we want to do is the battery health test so we go to high voltage we want high voltage system this so now gives you an overview of the critical battery components, contactors, and uh, pyro fuse and everything. But we just want to run this battery health test. So there's a few things that you need to have to enable this. So you need to be in park. You need to have a key on the dashboard here. We need to be at 50% state of charge or less. And then we just need to unlock the gateway. So the gateway, as far as I understand, is just something there so that you don't accidentally start running one of these tests. Because some of these tests, I don't think it's good to interrupt them once it's running. And possibly you can't. So I'm at 33% state of charge. And what the car is going to do is use the systems within the car to deplete the battery down. And it's probably going to, it gives you a warning saying it's going to create heat and, and things from the car and probably not going to be too comfortable in the cabin while it's running this test but uh so yeah well let's unlock the gateway first and then see what happens so we've got to put a foot on the brake and then hold the indicator to the right and now i've unlocked the gateway Okay, so that gateway is unlocked now. So you can see I meet all the requirements to start the battery health test. So let's just uh, kick that off. So it gives you some warnings here. Uh, I'm struggling to read all those things, but um, pumps, fans, drive units, they'll start making noise. They'll be getting warm, they'll be trying to discharge the battery, and my state of charge is below 50%. Vehicle must be plugged in AC charging station capable of supplying at least 6 kilowatts. Uh, test may take up to 24 hours. 
that's fine. High voltage battery will be discharged and then charged to full. Heat will be generated outside the vehicle during discharge. So, yep, that's all the warnings there. So I'm ready to go. I've got, you can see I've got scan my Tesla set up here ready to go. I'm going to do a screen record on that and record as much of this initial uh, stage as possible and just to see what the car is doing to discharge. Now I can't let the screen record go for 24 hours but it'll just be this first part where it's discharging the battery that we'll be most interested in. How it's doing that and watching that get down to see what percentage it takes it down to. I'm assuming it's going to take it down to uh, full depletion of the battery to, to then measure the capacity. So let's go. Let's, uh, let's start this running and let's see what happens. Straight away you can hear the heat pump kicking in. Sounds like it's preconditioning for fast charging. I can also hear the rear motor buzzing. Okay, let's just let that run. Let's go around and have a look, a bit of look on the outside of the car and just have a listen to what it's doing. Okay, so here at the front of the car, you can hear those fans going crazy. You can hear the heat pump going. And come around the back. Pretty sure I can hear that rear motor buzzing as well, but we'll be able to have a look on scan my Tesla and uh, see if it's using the rear motor. So yeah, just jump back in the car. And you can see here, it's discharging at three kilowatts from the battery, or almost four. So that's going to do what, four kilowatt hours per, per hour. So that's gonna take a long time to discharge this battery at this rate. You can see it's also using the rear power. It's, it's also powering that rear motor, like the battery heater uh, type of function. And what else are we seeing? Um, we're just seeing the rear stator heat up. I'm not seeing the battery inlet temperature come up at all. And we can see battery current 10 amps. So there is 18.6 kilowatt hours left. So that's going to take uh, you know, probably between four and five hours to discharge. I don't know if it's going to just stay at this level or, or whether it's going to ramp that up at all, but uh, yeah, let's just let it do its thing. Right, it's been running for about two hours now so word of warning if you're doing this at home during the night the car is very very loud so if if it's parked near uh, someone's bedroom or something uh, yeah I'd suggest doing it somewhere else it is super super loud those those fans at the front discharging heat so let's have a look and see where it's at now Left scan my Tesla running and see it's still almost uh, four kilowatts discharge from the battery. Uh, the rear motor's still running warm. Rear stator temp is 46 degrees. So you can see the battery cell temps are just 24, 23. So it's really discharging a lot of energy using that rear motor. It's not putting anything, any heat back into the battery. It's venting that heat out to atmosphere. So let's have a look, where are we at? We're at 18% now. And yeah, it's, it's all, all going well, test in progress. Okay, just thought I'd come down and do a check before I went home. So battery health test is still running. It stopped the discharging at about 10%. And it's just sitting here, I guess it's, it still says test in progress, but I'm going to need to leave that here today. I thought it had actually stopped and there was an error, 
but it says 10% left and test in progress. So I'm assuming this is all part of the process. So look at scan my tests so quickly and you can see there's very, very little power. Possibly it just sits here and settles for a while and then it starts charging the battery back up. Okay, the battery health check finished overnight. Now, from where I left off yesterday, the, the car just sat on that 10% 10 uh, 10 battery capacity figure for about four hours. Then it started uh, charging the car up. It looks like it did charge the car at 11 kilowatt speed. And I think it was about 12, 30, one o'clock in the morning, it, it, it finished up and got it to 100%. And then I've just come back into work this morning and checked that, and you can see the figure is at 94%. So 6% degradation, 30,000 Ks. It's pretty much in line with what I've read. It's, it's not what I expected. I expected the car to use the rated capacity of 52.5 kilowatt hours that I've been able to find. But it looks like it's used, it's compared the, the battery capacity now where it's at now to that original full pack when new or installed capacity. And this is where the gray area is when you're looking at degradation. But this is what the car is telling me. Uh, I think this, the rated capacity of the car is 52.5 kilowatt hours, which would put me at, you know, like 1.2% degradation. I think that is more what it's at because these batteries do have a settle-in period where that goes from that installed capacity down to its normal standard rated capacity after a while. Once those cells sort of settle in and stabilize, you do have a big reduction in the capacity initially. And that's quite normal for these batteries. So I'm inclined to believe I'm sort of sitting on about, you know, somewhere between 1% and 2% degradation, but if you use that uh, full pack when new figure and compare that to the, the nominal full pack figure, it looks like that's what's happening here with Tesla anyway with this battery health test. And that's fine. I, I think really what I would be expecting with the LFP battery is for it to get to a 10% degradation figure somewhere between 50 and 100,000 kilometers, and it really shouldn't change much from that point for the rest of the, the life of the battery. So it will, it will stay like that for a long time. And that's, that is a normal trend for an LFP battery. As far as I can tell with my research. So I don't really have any long-term experience with these LFP batteries in electric cars. So it, it's up to you. I'm presenting you with the facts. We've done the test. Let's just have a quick look here at scan my Tesla. And we can look at those figures I was just talking about. So you can see full pack when new, 55.1. So that's the installed capacity of the battery before settling of the cells. And then we have the nominal full pack, which is where the, the charge is down to 0%. So from 100 down to 0, that is the full pack capacity. So that's not including the buffers. So we're at 51.8. So yeah, we're around that, what, 6%. Uh, degradation which is reflecting in the battery health test so I'm still happy with this the battery is still performing well and remember that long term most of the problems with a battery in electric car are going to be one or two cells giving you grief which can hopefully be replaced and repaired which we're seeing a lot of that coming out of Europe so I am happy with this but you, you can you can interpret the results uh, how you like this is my interpretation of it, and yeah, I'm still, I'm still pretty happy with this battery, happy with the performance, and this is what I expected to see in the car. So guys, I'm going to do a full, full rundown of the service mode, as far as I understand it. I'm going to do that in a separate video. I'm really enjoying it so far. I really miss this skateboard. You know, we call this a skateboard picture of the car, where you've got the wheels, the battery and it looks like a skateboard. I really love that image, and I, I really hate now that they've taken that away from the, the, charging, the, the charging screen in the car. Uh, it, it's there 
when you're not in the car and you look in and when you put the car on charge you can still see that skateboard image i thought that was a really cool image and for them to take it away from that charging screen here it's a bit disappointing so um yeah uh we will take the car out of service mode once i'm done but yeah full service mode uh rundown coming soon and guys, I really hope you learned something with this. If you've got any questions, ask them in the comments and I will catch you next video. Thanks.